What's up, great tens? You're hanging out with Looney yet again and Tracy. Tracy, how are you? I'm well, thanks, Looney. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to be here. All right, great tens. It is a Tuesday, so we're doing physical sciences. But before I get to that, I'd just like to tell you some great news. So you've been hearing us talking about Samsung and all the awesome devices that we're giving away. But just to tell you first, on the Learning Hub, we do have brand new exam content. Where is it? I want to show you guys. You see? Now, there you go. Brand new exam revision content. So guys, if you do have a Samsung tablet or a premium smartphone, which is your Galaxy S3s, your S4s, and all the awesome devices from Samsung, you can download all this information from your learning hub. So basically, what you need to do is download the learning hub from your Samsung apps on your tablet or from the Samsung Hub on your premium smartphone, okay guys? But for those of you who don't have an awesome Samsung device, we do have a Learn Extra Exam Revision Marathon competition running. And guys, please, 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 please enter because we are giving away nine awesome tablets, okay? So if you wanna be a winner, all you need to do is download the show notes. I will post them on our Facebook page. And then right at the bottom, you'll see that on the last page, there is a race number. What you do with the ra that race number is that you enter it, you fill in the entry form and you fill in your race number as well, and you only need to enter once, guys. So don't worry if you just entered like yesterday and you are in Looney, but I didn't enter today. You only need to enter once and make sure you urge your mother, your aunt, your cousin, your step cousin, their brother and everybody. Tell them to enter guys because we want as many entries as possible to get the competition going and to enter you guys into those lucky drawers. Remember to watch all the live shows because we might be announcing winners and all of that stuff, but we won't tell you when because we want it to be a surprise. So make sure you do enter so that you stand yourself a chance to win one of those awesome Samsung tablets. Okay, guys, do hit me up on Facebook. Our page is facebook.com forward slash learn extra. On Twitter, our handle is at learn extra. You can download the show notes, the videos, and the schedules on learn extra. See what I did forward slash live. And with all that said, Tracy will now give us a lesson in energy, right, Tracy? That's right. Thanks, right. Lenny. So, great tens. We've been we've been looking last week. We looked at mechanical energy, and we're going to take that one step further and practice a lot about mechanical energy. So, incredibly important to get this up, um, get this right. In this lesson, we're going to apply the law of conservation of mechanical energy. And the understanding here is that we're looking at mechanical energy being conserved. Okay, conserve means to keep it constant, all right? So we conserve the rhinos for future generations to hopefully have rhinos around. The same idea, mechanical energy is conserved, it remains constant. And we're going to apply that law. There's lots and lots and lots of calculations we can do with that. And then we want to consider situations where mechanical energy is not conserved, right? There'll be times where, where um, for example, friction plays a role and it's not conserved. So let's get into it. Our key concepts, we defined mechanical energy last week, but let's go back and make sure you know exactly what mechanical energy is. Mechanical energy is the sum or the total, okay, of all the energies, specifically when we speak about all the energies, I'm mentioning the kinetic energy and the potential energy that a body experiences. So, for example, if I hold this pen above the ground, it's got potential energy because of its position above the ground, right? And similarly, if I have, you know, imagine someone on a skateboard and they're moving, they're going to have energy because of that motion. So the mechanical energy is the potential energy that an object has as well as the kinetic energy because of its motion. So it's position or state above the ground and um, its kinetic energy would be because of its movement that a body would experience. So it's both of those two added together. Let's just recap what we had previously about mechanical energy. So I've got your potential energy. Let's write an equation for this. EP is equal to the mass an object has multiplied by the gravitational acceleration on it multiplied by the height above the ground. Remember, it's an object's got matter, so it's mass, and we want to think about its height above the ground, the fact that it's going to be pulled towards the ground by the gravitational um, force, and so it's got gravitational acceleration. Then if we had EK on the side here, we said 
that EK is all about movement, the kinetic energy, okay? So it's all about the movement, and so we have the equation a half m v squared. The v would stand for the velocity, and remember, and this is critically important, so many students would forget to square that velocity, and so your calculation is completely wrong, because you know squaring makes a big difference. And obviously the m would stand for the mass the object has. So half mv squared. That is what we defined potential energy and kinetic energy as being. And we notice that mechanical energy is those two added together. So now we need to move on to the law of conservation of mechanical energy. And you know the general law that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Well, now we want to specifically zoom in and focus on mechanical energy. Right? So we're saying here the total critical mechanical energy of an object remains the same in a closed system, or another way of saying that would be an isolated system. What do I mean by that? Well, an isolated system, we're talking about no external forces or no dissipative forces acting on the system. So there's no friction, there's no air resistance that could be slowing this um, system down, this object down, okay? Because obviously those things, friction would result in heat. If you just rub your hands together, you know that friction results in heat, okay? And in the same way, if this is not an isolated system, if there's friction adding, some of the energy, the mechanical energy, would be transferred into heat energy, okay, or maybe sound energy, other forms of energy, the overall total energy we know cannot be created or, dis or destroyed, but we are wanting to focus and zoom in on mechanical energy, and so in that case you cannot have, if, if we're having total mechanical energy conserved, then there can be no other forces that would influence the system that would result in it slowing down or, or transferring energy to anything else. Okay, so when I speak about mechanical energy, we're saying it must be conserved for this law to be holding true. So I want to write down an equation of how I could write this. The total mechanical energy, and I'm going to write this as capital E, big M, and I'm going to write there before, must be equal to the total mechanical energy after something has happened, all right? Or another way of saying it would be EM1 must be equal to EM2. The mechanical energy of a si situation or a system before must be the same as the mechanical energy of the system afterwards. Now that's going to have be very, very helpful. It might look like quite a simple equation, but if you think about it, each of those are referring to if I just give myself some more space, EP, I'm going to say 1, plus EK1 must be the same if p mechanical energy is conserved, must be the same as the mechanical energy afterwards. And so from this quite simple equation, do you notice that I'm breaking it down into, well, mechanical energy is potential energy plus kinetic energy. What is the potential energy? Well, it, we know it's mass times gravity times height. The kinetic energy is half the mass times the velocity squared. So do you recognize <coughs> that this mechanical energy being conserved means potential and the kinetic energy added together must be the same as the potential and the kinetic energy at the end? Right? We've got lots of information in that very simple statement. Going back to it, the mechanical energy before must be the same as the mechanical energy afterwards. So the total mechanical energy of a system remains the same if it's in an isolated system. Let's start by trying one, a couple of questions. So I've got a question here, a boy of mass 50, 50 kilograms. That's going to be useful. That's his mass runs at a velocity of five meters per second. That's my velocity. 
towards a rope hanging vertically down from a tall tree. He grabs the rope and swings upward, ignore friction. Calculate the maximum height the boy will reach above the ground. Now I want you to think about what the scenario is saying. We've, and I want to draw it for you, so let's give ourselves a bit of space. Um, I know I've got some space here. Okay. We've got the scenario. There's a little tree. And from this tree, there is a rope. And this boy runs to the rope, hits into the rope, and he's going to swing up. Are you following that? So he's hitting the bottom of the rope and swinging upwards. Maybe this curve should not be so curved. But going back to it, he is making this rope swing up. Okay? Sounds like great fun. Let's go and uh, see what the question is saying. The rope hanging vertically down from the tall tree. He grabs the rope and swings upwards. Ignore friction. Calculate the maximum height the boy will reach above the ground. So what I'm actually asking is how high does he get okay, off the ground? Well, let's go back and let's make sure we've got all the information that we've written down. We had his mass was 50 kilograms. We had the velocity, which was 5 meters per second. Is there anything else we have? I don't see anything else that we specifically have. We're wanting to find the height equals question mark. So let's try and write down an equation. And once again, I'm going to recommend to you that you give yourself a lot of um, Always give, write the simplest equation first, all right? So I'm going to start with mechanical energy at beforehand must be the same as the mechanical energy after, all right? EM1 is equal to EM2. What does EM1 mean? It is the mechanical energy, so it's the same as the potential plus the kinetic energy, and that's one, is equal to the potential plus the kinetic energy. Sorry, that's a two. Now, let's fill in the information we know. When he was running along, and this is, I'm going to add in, this is at the bottom, and this is going to be at the top, at the highest point of that swing as it swings up. Now, you might want to say, oh, but I've got equations of motion, I could do this as equations of motion. Actually, you can't do this with equations of motion because this is, would you agree with me? I'm just going to draw in this rope. This is a curved motion. Okay? It, he, hit the, um, he caught onto the rope there and he swung up. And that is a curved shape. And the equations of motion are specifically only, hear me, they are only can be used for motion that is linear, that is in a straight line. So you cannot use equations of motion. They will not work, all right? You can only use um, your energy equations here. All right, so we have information. We've got here the velocity down there was five meters per second, and we have, and we're trying to work out this height that he went above the ground. So let's fill in what we know. The potential energy at the bottom must be zero. Why? Because he was no, at no height above the ground. Maybe I can write that in. He was, at this point, it would be mass times gravity times height plus half mv squared is equal to mass times gravity times height plus half mv squared. Now I want to just quickly go and write some subscripts in. This was height one, that was velocity one. This was height 2 at the top and velocity 2 at the top. All right. Height 1 was 0, so that whole thing, big term, can become 0. And we have plus half his mass, which was 50. And he was hitting, catching onto this rope, moving at 5 meters per second. So 5 squared. Remember to square. So many students forget the squaring. Okay. Then we've got 50 
times gravitational acceleration, which is 9.8, plus the height, and this is height number two, this is at the top, plus, well, what about this last term? Would you agree with me that at this highest point, he's actually going to be stationary? Why? Well, because it swung up, and it just at that moment before it starts to swing down, he's going to be stationary, all right? So for that instant, it's going to be zero, which is why I know that that whole term would also fall away and be zero, because anything multiplied by zero will be zero. Great. So this long, complicated thing has actually simplified quite a lot. Let's go and calculate what we've got. We've got um, 25. Now, I'm actually, and this is a hint to you, I'm going to start at the end, all right, because so many students... Trust me, so many students struggle to um, know what to do with the... They forget to square. All right, and that's going to be a half 50 times 25. Now, because I want you to notice, take that step and square, because you, otherwise you might forget. And that will be 25 times 25. I don't see my calculator here, but it's fine. 25 times 25 is going to be 625. All right, sure, you can do that on your calculator. And let's go to this one. I can't do this in my head. 50 times 9.8. Um, that's going to be 50 times 9.8. Looney, are you watching me? <laughs> it's going to be, well, 400 and... 50 times 9.8. Well, it's going to be 500. Um, can you do that on, on your phone or your calculator. Okay, I'll do it now for you. Okay, that's great. And we will get that multiplied by h. Last little step while I wait for that calculation to come through is going to be, well, that's whatever times h times h. It's going to be h, the height, is going to be 625 divided by... 50 times 9.8, yes. 490. 490, I thought I was pretty close. I didn't want to take the risk on it. 490, 490, okay, and 625 divided by 490, okay, h must be equal to, equal to 1.2, should I round off? Um, yeah, let's round off to two decimal places. 1.28. Oh, sorry, 1.28. Excellent, 1.28 meters, and that is meters above the ground. So notice here, he has risen up a height, a vertical height of 1.28 meters above the ground. That's pretty high, right? So what an amazing swing here this, is, this has been. Grade 10s, I really hope that you can see that these questions, it might look complicated, but actually, very often the terms cancel to zero. And if you recognize and understand the law of conservation of mechanical energy, the fact that potential energy and kinetic energy add together to give you uh, mechanical energy. Looney, I think we should stop for a quick ad break. Kay. And grade 10s we will come back and do part B just after the break. All right. Mindset is we are going to take a break, so don't go anywhere. Part B straight after this. Welcome back, Mindsetters, from that break. I hope you guys are nice and refreshed and you're still understanding what Tracy is teaching you. Just to clarify, some of you guys don't understand the competition. So it's called the Learn Extra Exam Revision Marathon Competition. How you enter is that you download the show notes. I will post the link on the Facebook page for the notes. Once you've downloaded your notes, guys, there is a race number at the bottom of the notes, the last page. The bottom of the notes, there is a race number, okay? What you do with that race number is that I'll also post a link of the entry form. You fill in all your information on that entry form together with your race number, and then you'll be sent into a lucky draw to stand a chance to win one of nine Samsung tablets. I hope you guys understand now. And other news for you guys, starting from next week, the 14th of October, from five till six will be your brand new lessons. Okay, exam revision for you guys. Five till six, you're no longer in the four o'clock slot now. We're upgrading you grade 10 to the grade 11 slot, which is five till six. So make sure you tune in guys, because we're helping you with exam revision as well. We don't just 
look out for the matrix we look out for all our mindset tests. so make sure from next week five till six your brand new time slot you tune in and now i'll take it straight back to tracy thanks so much so mindset is we were getting going on this question and we wanted to tackle part two what effect will an increase in the math okay so they're saying if this boy was not 50 kilograms, but maybe 60 kilograms or 75 kilograms, his mass has increased, okay? What effect will an increase in the mass of the boy have on the height reached? So, the idea is, if he's really heavy, all right, will he swing up as high? So, what do you think? I want you to think about it. Verify your answer by means of calculation. If the mass of the boy is 60 kilograms and not 50, and his velocity remains constant. So he's still running at the same speed, he's just a, a heavier mass. So I'm gonna jump straight into our calculation that we had. We had EP1 plus EK1 is equal to EP2 plus EK2. And we said that was at the bottom and that was at the top, and that was zero plus, um, this was a half, m v squared is equal to mass times gravity times height plus zero. Now I you want you to look at this quickly and I want us to see if there's anything common across the board, right? And there is. Do you notice that we've got the mass in both of those terms? In fact, if I had the whole equation with all of them, this would have been, remember, mass times gravity times height, and this one is half mv squared, there's actually a mass in every single one of those terms. So if I took it out as a common factor, which you could do, all right, you would have <coughs> be able to cancel or divide through by mass across this whole term. Now, I want to try and do just show you that. So do you notice that we could say half, um, sorry, I want to write in this blue color as we continue our equation. We have here half mv squared. I could divide by m on both sides of the equation. mgh divide by m. And notice that the m's will cancel, the mass will cancel. So actually, this is completely independent of the height reached is completely independent of the mass, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to substitute the numbers. So you can see, even though I've just done it in, a, in the symbol form with the variables, I want us to put the numbers in as we had them here. It was half mv squared was equal to mass times gravity times height. And we had here a half times 60. Remember, that's his new mass. His velocity is still 5. Remember, to square is equal to 60, 9.8 times the height. Now, as I go through that, I can plug in my numbers. I'm going to say, well, 5 squared first, which is equal to, this calculator is not working for me today, 5, oh, sorry, you know what I think, I need to be on that, and we can try again, 5 squared, multiplied by 60 multiplied by 0.5 is equal to 750. Okay, so let's come and write in this term. It would be 750 is equal to 60 times 9.8. We can clear that. 60 times 9.8 is equal to 588H and 588 times the height. So 750 divided by 588, 750 divided 
divided by 588 is equal to 1, 27. Sorry. H is then equal to 1.28, I think it was. If we round off, 1.28, and that would be meters above the ground. Now, how does that compare to my previous answer? Well, let's go back and find it. 1.28 meters. So notice it is completely independent of the mass of the mass of the object. And again, you can see that because I had to cancel, divide through by the mass, and you can do that because you can take the mass out as a common factor. All right, let's get into one more question. Now, this is quite a long question. Um, <coughs> question two. Safiso Nklapo is a BMX champion and represented South Africa in the 2012 Olympics. An amazing um, sportsman, and there he is on a BMX. Now, BMX racing, they go up and down these quite steep hills, and they've got to pedal, pedal, pedal really fast, but usually they start up high, and then they go down. Now, I've got a sketch of the, the track that he's going to have to ride on. And so he starts up here at P high up, and he's going to ri ride through this track. Now, obviously, it's not to scale, and you can see the little person down the bottom in the house, but got the picture, okay? He's racing this ramp. In a warm-up lap, Safisa freewheels down the starting slope from point P to point Q. So he's starting up high, and he's going to go to point Q. Determine how high the slope must be in order to reach a speed of 9 meters per second. So if he was just freewheeling straight down, all right, how high must that ramp be so that he can get to that speed when he gets to the bottom to Q? Assume that the track is frictionless. Now, why would that be important? Well, because you're thinking about this idea, remember that if the track is frictionless, okay, it's going to mean that no energy is given into heat or transferred into heat energy. All the mechanical energy is going to be conserved, right? So that's a key, key factor. And they give us the mass of Sofiso, that he is, has a mass of 78 kilograms. All right. In the warm-up lap, here we are asking, how high must the ramp be? So I'm going to sketch this. P is up there, and we're saying to get down to Q, what must this height be? Height equals question mark. All right. So let's write up our values. We've got V at Q is equal to... 9 meters per second. That's how fast he wants to get to going. What else do we have? We don't have H, but we have M. Was 78 kilograms. What else do we have? I think that's about it. Oh, we do also have V at point P. At the top here, he would be starting the race stationary. Okay, and that's quite useful. So at the top here, V is equal to zero, so I'm writing there VP is equal to zero meters per second. Now let's get going on answering this question. So what do we need to have is we're going to have mechanical energy at P must be conserved, so it must be the same as mechanical energy at point Q. Or you could have top and bottom, or one and two, whatever it is. That's going to be EP plus EK is equal to EP plus EK. Now I want to make sure we've got subscripts right. That's at P, okay? That uh, second one is at Q. This one is at P, right? Now we can fill in our information. We had half M, no, sorry, mass times gravity times hard first. We we're doing... Mass times gravity times height at P. Plus zero. Why plus zero? Well, because I know that his velocity at the top here is going to be zero. He is starting from rest, so he's going to have no EK. Right? Is equal to EP, 
which actually is also in this case going to be zero, plus a half mv squared. And that was v at point Q. Let's fill in the information we have. 78 times 9.8 times the height, and that's in question, is equal to a half mass of 78 times 9 squared. I'm going to work out the second term first. So I'm going to work out the side first. 9 squared is going to give me 81. Multiply that by 78, multiply by 0 0.5 is equal to 3159. 3159. Now, on the other side, we had 78 multiplied by 9.8. So 78 multiplied by 9.8 is equal to 764.4 h. 764.4 multiplied by the height. So the height must be equal to 3159 divided by 764.4. And let's find our final answer. 3159 divided by 764.4 is equal to sorry, 4.31, which is equal to 4 point, was it 3.1 or 1.3? One 1.3. Three? One three meters. That means that this height had to be, sorry, 4.13 meters vertical, vertically above the bottom of the ramp. Okay, so that's starting from really, really high. Okay, and he's going to be cycling down. Right, hypothetical scenario. But go with that. We're going to start the next question. And let's look at question two. In the previous question, we, we consider if he saw freewheeling down the slope. Suggest how the situation would change if he pedaled. Now, I want you to think about what pedaling does. All right? When a person pedals, they go faster. So what it's going to mean is that he would be, instead of freewheeling down, he's now pedaling, and that's going to mean he would go faster, which would therefore mean he would increase the kinetic energy. Okay? So he would go, be going a lot faster, and the scenario would change, and that was only for two marks, so quite short and sweet. But I do want you to think, consider this a little bit more. The question originally said that there was, we assume that the track is frictionless. Now, how does a bicycle actually work? The person is applying a force, right? And the wheel is caused to turn because that force is transferred across the chain, right? So he's pedaling, that's going to apply a force. It would be in contact with the ground, and because of the friction with the ground, that is why it continues to turn forward. So actually, there are two completely different answers to this question. Because if we said, if there was no friction, the bicycle wheel wouldn't be allowed to turn any, f any further because it's got no friction. Right? But I think what they're trying to get in this, this question is the idea of increased kinetic energy, assuming that there is some friction. Let's start with, a with the next question. In his warm-up lap, as he continues freewheeling, he reaches point R. So. He has gone from this point up here, he has gone down the track to point Q and is continuing to get to point R. Is he all the way up to the top again? No, he's not. But he is some height, and they tell us, 2.5 meters vertically above the ground, above the bottom of the track. He reaches a point R, 2.5 meters above the lowest point on the circuit Q. Calculate his velocity at point R. So what I'm going to ask us to do is we're going to set up this question, and I want you to try this during the break. Remember, you're going to have mechanical energies conserved, right? EP plus EK is equal to EP plus EK. But I want you to notice that now you can't necessarily just make terms zero, because they might not be, okay? So I'm going to ask that you try this question, 
now while, while we take a short break. And when we come back, um, we'll go through it together. But challenge yourself. Do it. All right. Mindset is you heard, Tracy. Challenge yourself. Challenge, oh, challenge. challenge yourself and do the question and we'll see you straight after this break. Welcome back, Mindsetters, from that break. Just to let you know, we do have a brand new app on Facebook. It is the Help Desk, guys. So remember that if you have any questions and we don't get to them during the show, we have a Help Desk now on Facebook. I will post the link on our Facebook page for the address for that app. But we do have it on Facebook, so I hope you guys use it. And tell us how it is and just give us feedback on that. So now I'll send it straight back to Tracy. Thanks so much. So, grade tens, I gave you a question to try, and I hope you got there. I started it as well. Remember the question? We had he's starting at P, and he's going through to the bottom, but up to point R, which we know is 2,5 meters above the ground, above the, the lowest point on the track. And I've started this out. So, what are we doing? We're saying conservation of mechanical energy. The idea is that mechanical energy at point P must be the same as mechanical energy at point R. But what is mechanical energy? Mechanical energy is the potential plus the kinetic. So notice how I've just quickly written these down. It's EP at point P plus EK at point P, the highest point, must be the same as the potential at point R plus the kinetic at point R added together. So now I've just written down some values, uh, some, some of those, the each equation. We've got Mass times gravity times height at point P, this was at our highest point, is equal to half m velocity at point P. But hold on, you say he was stationary when he was starting, so that term is going to fall away, is equal to mass times gravity times height at point R. Okay, That term is not going to fall away, because remember, he's now at some point along the track, higher than the lowest point, plus a half m velocity at r. And this is the term I'm trying to find. We're asking how fast will he be going at point r. So let's write in what we have. 78 was his mass. Gravity would be 9.8. The height is a term that I do know. All right. Why? Well, because I worked it out in a previous question. It was 4.13. Right. We can go back there and check. Remember, we've just solved it. Sorry, one more back. We solved here, and we got that the height must be 4.13. So I've got that information, and I've substituted it in. But it's equal to, uh, sorry, the kinetic energy must be zero. Why? Well, because it we were stationary at the highest point B, P, before he went down. Plus, well, now this term, 78 times gravity of 9.8 times by height of R. This height of R was 2,5 meters above the ground. Check it, go back to the question. There it was, 2,5 meters above the ground. So that's that value. And lastly, we have plus a half, 78 velocity squared. Now, let's see if we can simplify these. So I'm going to grab the calculator and we can start by writing a whole num bunch of numbers. 78 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 4.13 is equal to 3156 comma 97. So 31 was a 56 comma 9 I've lost it. 3156 comma 972 plus 0. Now I'm going to keep it decimal places there. It would be quite useful is equal to. Let's do the next term. It was 78 times by 9.8 times by 2.5 meters above the ground. 1911. 1911 plus half times 78, if you want to check it, it should be 39, it's going to give me 39 velocity squared. 
right? Now, that velocity squared is a squared value. You're going to have to square root it as we go through the to the rest of the, this answer. Let's just go through the maths. 3156.972 minus 1911 is equal to 39v squared. Okay? And I have kept all those values because it's quite helpful to make sure that I'm using them carrying on. Oh, sorry, not divide. 3156.972 minus 1911 is equal to that. Notice that next I'm going to divide by 39 on both sides. So while I've got that there, I'm going to say divide by 39 is equal to, well, V squared was equal to 3, 1, comma, 9, 5, 9, 4, 8. 3, 1, comma, 9, 4, 8. Is that my final answer? No, it's not. You're going to have to square root. So notice you're going to square root both sides. And going back, I'm going to take that and say square root 3, 1, point, sorry, square root 3, 1, point nine four eight equals five comma six five. Now I'm going to write this final answer. V is equal to give ourselves some more space. Five point six five and I think that was it. That's it. Meters per second. That was the velocity that he would be traveling at at that point R. Now, think that through. It would make sense, okay? He's not yet at his, at his highest point, but he's not anything more than, than 9.8. He's losing speed as he's going up because he's gaining potential energy and losing kinetic energy. So make sure that you're thinking through your answers and remember to square root. That square can be a problem for a lot of people. Let's keep going. Would Sophisa be able to reach point S without pedaling at all? So notice here, We've started at point P, gone through QR. Would he be able to get to the point S? Provide a thorough explanation to substantiate your answer for three marks. Well, a couple of things. Would he be able to get there? If there was no friction, yes, he would. Because point S is very clearly lower than point P. So, yes, mechanical energy is conserved, therefore he would be able to get to point P, point S is lower than point P, therefore he would have enough mechanical energy to reach point S. Definitely, okay? Remember that as he's go going down, he's gaining kinetic energy, but losing potential energy. And as he's going up again, he's gaining potential energy, but losing kinetic energy. So would he keep going? Yes, he would. The same question could be answered in terms of if there was friction, then no, mechanical energy would not be conserved, and you could argue it that way. The question did ask us right at the beginning, assume that this, this, um, this track is frictionless, there is no friction. Let's keep going. A group of schoolboys try to be just like their hero, Sophisa, and get together on their BMX bikes to race down steep hills or roads. If you were Sophisa or writing a press statement for him, what would you say to these fans to explain the dangers of racing down steep hills and roads? Now, this is a real life scenario. We're saying, Sofiso is doing this on the track. Surely these other guys can do it as well. And they want to practice in their neighborhoods with the steep ups and downs. 
Well, what could be the dangers of that? Well, maybe you're going to speak about the fact that they're inexperienced and they've got no understanding of how to handle the bikes and they would be going really, really fast. Also, you would know Safisa wears a helmet and all the protective gear on his arms and his knees. Okay, And so the, these other schoolboys won't necessarily have that. So think about protection. Think about the speeds that they're going to be traveling at very, very fast. Because recognize that as he's going down steep hills, he's going to gain a lot of speed. And the next thing we need to speak about is this track is a track which only the BMX races go on, not in other cars or other vehicles, trucks. Think of the other um, users on the road. So do you recognize there's lots you can say there for your three marks? I'm not going to write anything down, but certainly um, there's lots you could speak about in terms of dangers. Other cars on the roads, um, inexperience, not wearing protective gear, all those types of things. Will mechanical energy be conserved when BMX racing? Explain why or why not. Now, I want us to think about this in terms of a real life scenario. They're asking us to actually evaluate the scenario. If a student is riding on a BMX bike, there's going to be friction between the tires and the gravel on the road. Are you with me? So actually, there will be friction and mechanical energy will not be conserved. And that's to, um, to sign off the last two, question, two marks of this long question. So no, mechanical energy would not be conserved. There are other forces. You could even think about air resistance, although he's probably not going that fast to result in serious air resistance. Let's try to see if we can set up one more question before we close today. A ball of mass, 250 grams, hint, hint, think that through, you need to convert to SI units, which means you need to convert that to kilograms, is dropped from a height of 1.5 meters and it bounces to a height of one meter. Now, I want us to sketch this picture very quickly. We've got a ball dropping. It started 1.5 meters above and it falls, it hits the ground, and it bounces up, okay? But it only gets to a point that is one meter above the ground. Are you following the picture? Okay, let's go back to the question. A ball of mass that is dropped from a height and it bounces to a height of one meter. What is the kinetic energy of the ball at the top of the bounce? So if we're looking at this ball at that point there, it's about to fall down again. Are you with me? So it's dropped, it hits the ground, it bounces up, and it's about to go again. Wh I want you to think about the kinetic energy. This is at its highest point above the ground. Because if it's at its highest point, it will momentarily be stationary. Think that through. Now, I know we can't see in slow motion, but imagine if this ball is hitting the ground, bouncing up, and it's about to start going, it was going up, and now it's going to start going down. For an instant in time, at that highest point, its velocity will be equal to zero, just for a moment, right? And so what would the kinetic energy of the B of the ball? Well, the kinetic energy is going to be half mass times velocity squared, which would be equal to... Well, half, if you've gone to the trouble of converting, you would say 250 divided by 1,000, okay, times naught squared. And what's naught squared? Still zero. So the, the kinetic energy at, of the ball at the top of its bounce is going to be zero. One last one. Is mechanical energy conserved? Explain your answer by doing a calculation. Well, I want us to think about this. Immediately I can say no, because that ball bounced only to one meter above the ground and not back to 1.5 meters. But what kind of energy, where would it have gone to? Well, think about it. When it's hitting the ground, it's no longer an isolated system because now the ground is acting with various forces, deforming that ball, changing its shape. It also, 
would, you would hear a sound, there would be sound energy. So a lot of that mechanical energy is converted into other forms of energy. And I hope that that really has helped you to make sense of mechanical energy, questions about conservation of mechanical energy, and really would, would be very useful for you as you go forward. Great tens, good luck, God bless, and keep working hard. Thank you so much to Tracy for giving us that great lesson. Mindsetters, thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, next week we'll see you at 5 till 6 because we're upgrading you to the grade 11 slot. So grade 10s, remember, 5 till 6 next week. Thank you for tuning in. Everything of the best with your exams. We love you and goodbye.